Thanks to the success of NASA's Juno mission, we're going to get less stupider and learn more about Jupiter. Everyone hates me. Uh, that came from <laughs> NASA's Snapchat itself officially. I don't want to see any hate over that. NASA said it, and they're smarter than me. So <laughs> if they can do it. <laughs> hey, no, those are those are legitimate kid jokes. Yeah. No, boys go to Jupiter to get more stupider. That was the the thing. This is it's a big deal because yeah. it actually got in there within one second of projections, which is so insane cool. considering how far away it is. Uh, Jupiter, as you may know, is a gas giant and the most massive uh, planet we have uh, locally in our system. Um, our and local planets. Our local, our friendly <laughs> neighborhood planets. Um, and it's, uh, they actually did take some still images upon approach of Jupiter along with its moons uh, Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. Juno on its approach managed to capture a movie of Jupiter and its moons. And we're going to show that to you tonight. And for the first time, all of us together will actually see the true harmony in nature. This is what it's about. This is what Jupiter and its moons look like. This is what our solar system looks like if you were to move out. It's what the galaxy looks like. Uh, that was so mission cool. scientist Scott Bolton talking over the... Well, I, I would say footage, but it's actually a, a series of still images uh, forming together. And he had some, he was really wistful and kind of poetic about what he had to say. You know, saying there's true harmony in the balance, there's harmony at every scale, because he's talking about, you know, the most wide grand terms we can think of, but yeah. also, you know, the most tiny term, terms. Like when, when you look at how uh, the most minuscule property, something fell off over the set over there. <laughs> It, it, it truly is beautiful how balanced everything is. It's so cool. Um, this is this is amazing. And what I, what sort of hit me was that it took 48 minutes after um, it got there to hear to get the confirmation. Uh -huh. Can you imagine sitting there for 48 minutes after all the work that went into this mission to sit there and think, God, it, did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Well, no matter what you did, there's nothing you can nothing. do to fix it. Because, no. Well, that's how long it takes for NASA on Earth to communicate with Jupiter, or Juno, close to Jupiter, yeah. rather, uh, orbiting. It's on a 53-day uh, cycle around the planet, and so that means it'll be a little bit before we get pictures. So cool, though. I, I'm just, I'm kind of blown away by this. Um, I've had a couple people from NASA on some panels that I've done talking about this, and it's just, so having heard about this consistently for a long time, it's mm -hmm. just so cool. I'm, I'm kind of a space nerd. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. I don't. You, you say that like you're. It's embarrassing. No, I'm just. Um, I, I get really. So what's going to happen is it's going around Jupiter in an orbit, and the, at certain places it will be closer. So it'll swing over the north pole of the planet and get very close underneath the debris and radiation, which may be dangerous. <laughs> uh, which is a lot. A big reason why many people uh, on the mission were nervous about the uh, the initial uh, burn off. And right. so it, it'll duck under close to the equator, and that actually will only take a couple hours at that point, but that will be when the most science takes place. Yeah. And they're going to be checking uh, moisture levels, radiation levels, and uh, the, the goal there is trying to figure out, you know, what kind, what's under the crust, yeah. you know, and w what happened to this planet? How was it formed? How, how, what is its place in the universe? And yeah, it helps us figure out our place. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's funny that it's, all of this for just a mission, well, the, a crucial point of just a few hours close yeah. to the equator, um, which Bobak told me how to pronounce, Piri Jove Pass. Thanks. That's what it right. should be called. I'm sorry, Bobak. Thanks, Bobak. I've only ever read it. <laughs> and I said, Bobak, help me not sound like an idiot. <laughs> so we'll see. Blame him. Blame NASA Mohawk Eye. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's cool, like, to, to also to check the magnetic field, uh, which is very similar to how other planets in the are checked, like Mars, for instance, um, yeah. so we can learn more about it. Uh, but this is much, much further away, so it's a, it's a big feat. And of course, you know, Europa is uh, one of the moons, and it has the most likelihood, I would say, or the most uh, strong likelihood of being able to support life. So yeah. this is a very exciting thing that we're approaching and getting closer to, to learning about and probing maybe and, and figuring more about. It's so cool to also have gotten uh, like a news alert on my phone and you know the first thing you think is oh god what happened now and it was actually something really good. Mm -hmm. It made me happy. Yeah, for once. For once, <laughs> thanks.
Thanks, NASA, Yay, for making NASA. me happy. Well, NASA is doing good things. Yeah. You know, creating yeah. innovations for us on Earth and studying. and uh, Going to the open house helped me learn a lot about what's going on there. I'm sorry, I have a stuffy nose. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, what, how we can learn about our own climate and our own inventions to improve human life. It's great. It's all a beautiful mosaic. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be learning more about this mission um, as time goes on and as the, the it moves closer into the, the orbit and to the equator. Uh, audience, were you watching with bated breath? What did you think of it? And uh, what, what are your thoughts on the mission? Let us know below in the comments. Please like and subscribe for more.